I'm Natalia from IntelliCAD Technology Consortium, and in this video I will review IntelliCAD 10. And the first feature I would like to review is Dynamic Input. It is a command interface that displays near the cursor in the drawing area. If I start any command with Dynamic Input on, for example Polyline, you can see a command prompt, Pointer Input, and Dimension Input fields next to my cursor. It's very useful, because from one hand I can see my current distance and angle of my line, but from the other hand it's easy to enter specific values using the Tab key to switch between input fields. Let's say I want to draw using specific angle, so I use the Tab key to navigate to the Angle Edit box and type 30. Switch to the previous box and see that value 30 is locked. It's like being in polar tracking mode, but you are not limited with angle value. Now, when I finish my command, I can select several entities and check dimensions using dynamic input. In my opinion, this feature will make your drawing life much easier. To disable and enable dynamic input feature, use the DIN mode system variable or the toggle dynamic input on off button on the status bar. Right click on the same button gives you access to the new dynamic input tab in the drawing settings dialog that gives you an opportunity to disable enable and modify the settings for the three components of dynamic input individually. And one last very useful tip I want to mention is that you can turn off dynamic input temporarily by holding the F12 key pressed while a command is active. IntelliCAD 10 now supports OBJ and STL file formats. Use the application button, select the import menu to access the STL in and OBJ in buttons or use STL-in and OBJ-in commands. The imported entity is a facet model body, imported onto separate layers. I want to apply materials to this model using the new Explore Materials feature. Associated button is located on the Tools ribbon tab, or you can access it using the Exp Materials command. Press the Import Materials button to import materials from an external ICMAT file into the drawing. And select whether to map the material on the preview image as a cube, sphere, or plane. You can also cut, copy, and paste materials from one drawing to another. Let's switch to the realistic visual style and apply the imported materials to the model using the Layer Explorer. You can do the same through the Properties pane using the Material option. Or if you want to apply the material to a particular entity, just drag and drop the material from the Material Explorer. I have to mention that the eTransmit dialog was updated. Now the list of materials can be added to the package. And the materials item was also added to the approach dialog. And now I want to demonstrate new and improved visual styles using this model with applied materials. Conceptual visual style was completely redesigned and IntelliCAD 10 supports five new visual styles. Shaded display surfaces using smooth shading. Shaded with edges, display surfaces using smooth shading and visible edges. Shades of gray, display surfaces using smooth shading and monochromatic shades of gray. Sketchy, displays 2D entities and surfaces with a hand-sketched effect. And X-ray, displays surfaces with a partial transparency. To demonstrate the X-ray visual style, I want to use different drawing. In IntelliCAD 10, anti-aliasing is available to smooth jagged edges on curved lines and diagonals. Anti-aliasing is controlled by the Line Smoothing System Variable for 2D Entities and the GSMSAA System Variable for 3D Entities. Both system variables are accessible through the Graphics Performance Settings dialog box. Let's review light support. First of all, several options were added for default lighting. You can switch default lighting on and off using the Lighting Default Control on the Properties pane, 
or the default lighting system variable. Set light type using the default light type control or the default lighting type system variable and change light intensity from 0 to 100% range using light intensity or the default lighting intensity system variable. Please note that new properties pane controls for default lighting are not available for 2D wireframe, conceptual, and hidden visual styles. Also in Intellicut 10, a lights panel was added on the View ribbon tab, and it contains two items, point light and spotlight. Point lights and spotlights were available in previous Intellicut versions, but now they are easier to use in Intellicut thanks to the new visual styles. Let's start with the spotlight. To see the effect of point light or spotlight, you have to turn the default lighting off and set the visual style to realistic. Now I can place my spotlight, specifying source and target locations. A spotlight distributes a focused beam of light in the shape of a cone, just like a flashlight. I can change the size of a cone using grips, move and copy spotlights just like any other entities in your drawing. Turn spotlight on and off using the properties pane, change color, and its intensity from 0 to 100%. Let's create a point light. It illuminates everything around it and doesn't target an object. So all you have to do is to specify source location. As well as for spotlight, point lights can be moved and copied, turned on and off, and its intensity can be changed. Better light support, transparency, and improved and new visual styles are the result of aiding the OpenGL S2 graphics device. You can switch between OpenGL and new GLES graphics using the Switch Graphics Device button on the status bar. Multiline Text Editor supports two new features in IntelliCAD 10. First one, the Paste Special functionality that pastes text from the clipboard and controls its format. It's available in Context menu and has three options. Paste without character formatting, insert text ignoring character formatting. Paste without paragraph formatting, insert text ignoring paragraph formatting. And paste without any formatting, insert text ignoring both character and paragraph formatting. You can easily clear formatting from your text and return your text to its default formatting styles using the clear formatting feature. It's similar to the previous one, but controls formatting of already inserted text. The clear formatting feature is active only when some text is selected and available on the formatting tab from the ribbon or in the context menu. Clear formatting feature has three options. Clear character formatting removes all character formatting for selected text, such as bold, underline, italic, color, width, factor, etc. Clear paragraph formatting removes all paragraph formatting for selected text such as line spacing, justification, listing, and more. And clear all formatting removes both character and paragraph formatting. Selection cycling tab from the options dialog is changed. Now it consists of two fields. At the top one, you can choose cycling method of overlapping entities that suits you the most. This part is controlled by the new selection cycling mode system variable. And at the bottom field, you can select whether you need visual aids and what kind you want. Icon, list of overlapping entities, or both. Let's choose both of them. And now, when I'm moving my cursor around the part of the drawing where is more than one entity, you can see two blue squares appear. And now, when I click, a list of overlapping entities appears. This part is controlled by the selection cycling system variable. And now I want to move to the Beam Special Interest Group achievements. Dynamic input is customized for AC entities. For example, when I add doors, all kinds of dimensions appear changing in real time. Entity width, distance to every entity on the wall, and distance to each end of a parent wall. Also, 2D visualization for AC objects was improved to make drawing reading easier. Now, when you display the 3D model in plan view, excessive details such as header for the door are skipped. Stairs will have a direction arrow so you can figure out which way they are going, which meets requirements for a 2D construction document.
In IntelliCAD 10, you can add a roof to your building using snaps or draw a roof independently. Now when the roof is created, I want to improve it a little. This end of a roof should have a gable, so I'm selecting a roof, move the cursor over the grip and click on the Convert to Gable item. Now I want to change overhang, which I can do through the Properties pane. Same with the Rise field. And now I want to demonstrate a grip editing. You can pull a section of a roof out and the whole roof will be automatically redesigned based on a new grip location. Next is a new IFC ODA import command that imports geometry from the IFC file. A new beam unit system variable determines how units are converted when attaching a beam underlay to a drawing. When set to zero, the units of the underlay are converted to the units of the drawing. When set to one, no units are converted. The underlay is inserted with one-to-one -one units even if the units are different. And when set to two, the units of the drawing are converted to the units of underlay. And the last one is the new beam explode command that breaks apart an attached beam underlay into polyface meshes and polylines that can be edited. Beam Explode is similar to using the Explode command for Beam Underlay, except all Beam Underlay intelligence is kept intact and each resulting entity is placed on its own layer. Let's review new commands. Background command activates the background dialog box where you can define type, color, effects, and position of the current view's background. Let's review different background types. Solid defines a single color solid background. Gradient specifies a two or three color gradient background. You can also specify an angle to rotate a gradient background. And the most interesting one is the image. Specifies an image file for the background. In the Adjust Background Image dialog, you can specify options for background image, such as image position using one of the following options. Center, centers image, without changing its proportions or scale. Stretch centers image and stretches it, so image can take the entire view. It's better to set image position to stretch if you plan to print the background image. And tile locates image at the top left corner of the view and replicates the image as needed to fill up the space in the associated viewport. The image's aspect ratio and scale are maintained. Offset specifies the image offset control. Scale specifies the image scale. Offset and scale options are not available if stretch is selected as the image position. Vertical and horizontal position sliders offset the image vertically or horizontally if the offset option is selected and adjusts the Y or X scale of the image if the scale option is selected. Maintain aspect ratio when scaling checkbox locks the X and Y axis together if checked. Also, backgrounds can be set up in the View Manager dialog. One more addition from the View Manager dialog I would like to demonstrate is the Perspective slider. To use it, turn the Perspective view on using the New Perspective option, and now you can adjust lens length dynamically using a new slider. If you need to get a visual representation of the current layout in model space, the new Export Layout command is the great way to do that. To access Export Layout command, right-click on the Current Layout tab or type Export Layout in the command bar. The Export Layout to Model Space Drawing dialog box is displayed, asking for the name of the drawing you would like to export the current layout to. Exported objects are 2D entities allocated on the Model tab. These entities can be exploded, scaled, copied, and trimmed. The command is not available from the Model tab while in Block Editor, during Reference Editing, or while using a maximized viewport. 
let's review improvements in printing and publishing areas. First one is the new modified paper size item in the Printer Configuration Editor dialog. To access it, select the printer you want to change default options for, press Properties button, switch to the Settings tab, select the Modify Standard Paper Size item, and press the Modify Papers button. You can select standard paper size from the list, modify the printable area, and save modifications to a PMP file. For all PC3 files, custom properties are available now. Also, in the Publish dialog box, a new ability to select a layer state for a sheet was added. Let's move to user interface improvements. The first one is clickable keywords are available for all commands now. A clickable keyword, which is highlighted with a hyperlink, gives you an access to the option by clicking on it. The second one is the Clean Screen Options dialog box. It's available using the Clean Screen Options command or right-click on the Toggle Clean Screen On-Off button. In this dialog box, you can choose which interface items will remain visible and which will be hidden when Clean Screen Toggle is on. The item will be hidden if the checkbox is checked. If you want to migrate custom user interface settings from an older version of IntelliCAD to a newer version, you will love the new Migrate tool. Use the Migrate UI button located at Manage panel in the Tool ribbon tab or call Migrate command from the command bar. Enter the file path of the CUI file that contains the customization you want to migrate to the current version of IntelliCAD or press question mark to view the list of all available CUI files. Here you have several options. Replace with given option will entirely replace the current customization with the one from the selected CUI file. Merge prefer given and merge prefer current options will merge customizations with a preference to the previous or current release in the case of conflicts. Several improvements were added to the customized user interface dialog box. Now you can configure commands from the command list by changing button bitmaps, display name, command name, description, and visibility. Also, context menu added where you can add new commands, duplicate existing one, or delete unused commands. One more improvement in this dialog is the ability to set current workspace. New display text property control was added for ribbon. It's very useful when you are working with several workspaces and each of them contains a tab named Home, for example. As a result, in the customization dialog, you will have several items named Home, display text property control, solving this issue. And the last improvement related to the customized user interface dialog box is that CUI import and CUI export options are available as independent commands now. You can open Tool Palette pane with particular Tool Palette displayed using new TP Navigate command or navigate through the Tool Palette pane specifying which Tool Palette or Palette group to display. New Ribbon Mouse Wheel system variable was added to enable and disable ribbon tab switching by mouse wheel scroll. When set to 1, mouse wheel scroll switches ribbon tabs when cursor is over the ribbon. And mouse wheel scroll doesn't switch ribbon tabs when ribbon mouse wheel is set to 0. This option is also accessible from the Options dialog box display tab. Also, you can change the order and sort the layer filters list in IntelliCAD Explorer. The status bar for IntelliCAD 10 has been completely redesigned to make it easier to read, understand, and use. The button size has been increased by 50% and the graphics usability have been enhanced to help users understand when features are enabled or disabled. Two new features were added for the MicroStation DGN native file editor in IntelliCAD full support of multi-line text in place editor and charm for command is available now. Let's move to the performance enhancements. The first one is the new progress bar. GR Draw graphics performance is improved. 8x performance improvement for explore layers list. 
trace and throw for layers in viewports has improved by 15x. Selection preview is much faster now. Block Explorer has improved performance for bitmap creation. Performance for offset for some polylines. Snapping performance for every large drawing files. As well as performance for the array and overkill commands is improved too. And at the end, I want to briefly mention all other improvements. Initial Hungarian translation of IntelliCAD is available now. WNDL stat system variable renamed to status bar. Beam pane command renamed to beam prop. Beam pane close command renamed to beam prop close. And beam pane state system variable renamed to beam prop state. And the very last change I want to mention is that starting from IntelliCAD 10, 32 bit versions are no longer officially supported but we will leave 32-bit projects in the IntelliCAD solution. This is all I have for now. Please leave your comments and thank you for watching this video.